Hi there traders, welcome to Admiral Markets. My name is Chris. Looking forward to this webinar where we take a look at patterns. Uh, the uh, title of the webinar is actually focused on wave and chart patterns, but I wanted to focus on candlestick patterns to basically, the idea is that we'll be looking for candlestick patterns as a confirmation uh, how to trade those wave and chart patterns. All right, so candlestick patterns uh, are, or candlestick formations uh, in general, uh, are very valuable as a confirmation of what price is doing. So the wave and chart patterns give us the kind of the, the roadmap, what price could be doing, but the candlesticks are really how we interpret that and how we, how I at least enter and exit and uh, how I basically use that, those patterns on the charts. And uh, yeah, so chart analysis, wave analysis is great, you know, to understand the bigger picture, but the, the candlesticks are really where uh, the entries and, and the trading is done. So that's the difference. So I wanted to focus on this today. So before we get started, though, as always, two disclaimers. First of all, uh, this uh, webinar is shown to a global audience, but may not be suitable for everyone. Therefore, please check out AdamMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact the appropriate entity to find out if it is suitable for you. <clears throat> And second of all, please note that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. Alrighty. So more webinars you can check out, of course, admiralmarkets.com slash education, and then go to this tab right here, the top left corner of Forex and CFD webinars and you can check out what we have in mind. And uh, here you can see more webinars coming up, scalping revisited, real-time daily trading ideas, and session recaps, and the usual weekly schedule starts again next week. All right, now with regard to um, Forex and CFD webinars, all right, we do focus in this webinar often on Forex, but yes, CFDs are part of trading as well with Admiral Markets, and you can check out exactly which ones and what is uh, available right here under products. You can check out how to start trading right here with the, the regard to opening account and which software. Well, you can check out MetaTrader for Supreme Edition under platforms. All right. So a lot of things to check out just besides the analytics and education. And uh, definitely recommend that. There's a lot of good material here just below the uh, education and analytics tabs on a daily basis. So if you're looking to uh, to grow as a trader, definitely check that out. So I wanted to focus, as I already said in the introduction, on candlesticks. So basically, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, let's take a look at the year dollar, just to give you an idea. We were talking about it yesterday already, saying basically that this particular candle here, the bearish candle right here, uh, that candle, I was looking for a bearish close near a low as an indication that price might be making uh, a breakout to the downside. And uh, you can see that the candle actually closed quite far away from the low, and there was a sizable wick at the bottom, as you can see. So, uh, you know, candlestick patterns do not necessarily appear all the time. Uh, they are, especially in higher time frames, it could take some time, of course. So... When I talk about candle, <coughs> excuse me, I have a small cold. <clears throat> when I talk about candlestick patterns, I talk just generally and roughly about candles themselves as well, especially on higher time frames. Excuse me, there's a telephone. One second. Oh, all right, it's it's gone already. So, especially on higher time frames, we don't necessarily have to wait for uh, candlesticks patterns. We could just analyze the candles uh, as well on the daily, on a weekly on a monthly chart, even four hour chart. But lower time frames, I think more context is needed to use candlestick patterns and candlesticks. Now on a higher time frame, each candle has already a lot of value and provides a lot of information, right? So, but still it's good to understand the context of course and understand patterns. But generally speaking, they provide a lot of information uh, just, just generally as a, as a standalone concept but especially if price is trying to break or bounce in a zone of interest. 
What that what does that mean? So basically, here is a zone of interest where price was approaching a support level and it was trying to break through this support trend line. So that's the zone of interest. So if it shows a strong bearish candle there, there's a good chance of a bearish breakout. But we didn't get it. We got a wick, and I already said it's indecision. And if I looked at the lower time frames, I thought actually the price was more set up for upside rather than downside. Uh, we had a small bullish candle with the wick on top, so more indecision. But uh, when I looked at the lower time frames, I was more inclined to say that this is a, you know, a three-wave correction up to resistance which indeed is happening. So that proved to be, the analysis proved to be correct and indeed works out. And the analysis, the wave analysis was saying that this is an ABC, this is momentum, uh, and we might see a bounce here. We did get the bounce, we saw a correction, and we're getting another leg up. So <clears throat> the wave analysis confirmed it, the chart analysis confirmed it. From a candlestick pattern, what could have been entry? There was no entry on the daily chart. For my opinion, not. Maybe some of some would have taken this bullish candle as an entry signal. I think it was too weak, personally. But you know, those opinions can can vary. For me, there was no signal on the daily chart necessarily. Uh, this one was a good signal on the daily chart. But on lower time frames, yes, four-hour chart, one-hour chart, maybe these bullish candles, four-hour chart, maybe this bullish candle, right early this morning breaking above the highs here. All right, so a bullish candle like that is, is, is a decent confirmation of continuation. We have a close not too far from the high. It's okay-ish. We have a close, more importantly, above these resistance levels, and uh, it's, a, it's a decent size. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's okay trigger. Once again, this is a trigger on the Audi chart. Uh, it could have been this candle that looked good, or this one, or this one. So we're not sure how far this is going. Of course, uh, you know my target would be 118, uh, between 118 and 118.50, when price hit 118 already, in fact. But I would still expect more follow-through, to be honest, up to the resistance trend line. So this is how you can use candlestick patterns, or candles in general. So another great example was the Aussie. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was talking about the Aussie already in a, in, a, in a video yesterday, and you can see that I was looking for a bearish candle there, bearish candle to confirm the breakout to the downside. So what I looked what, what I was looking for was a bearish close near the low. There we go, right there, we had it. All right, bearish close near the low, stop loss below it, above it, of course, above the candle high. And down it goes. So it's getting close to the target, 76.30. I think I had his first target, 75, a second target. And we've had a very bearish day since then. Of course, the news did help. And, um, you know, those things, of course, occur. But, or I should say the data release that occurred. But from my point of view, the, the candle close in the low was definitely a confirmation. And we already had engulfing twins here. Anyone looking for candlestick patterns might have taken that trade already. And in fact, I talked about the Aussie downside already uh, on this day too, on the lower time frames on one hour chart. But I thought that it was worth confirmation continuation here if we get another daily candle. So this is one example of a good, you know, daily candle close. What is the context of that close, that particular candle? Why that candle could be a good shorting candle? So from my perspective, price was in a downtrend already. This was a correction, and once it starts to make here a turn, this could be a, a lower a high uh, within that downtrend. And then in that case, price could be breaking the support trend line and it could be extending its fall further down. <clears throat> All right. So from this perspective, it looks like it finished a correction like this and plenty of space down to support. All right, so that was a good example of a daily candle confirmation. Uh, Euro-odd also. Euro-odd yesterday, candle, strong candle, strong bullish candle, already several candles in a row to the upside like this, breaking actually resistance channel like this. 
the resistance of this channel and accelerating the upside. So yes, good candle to confirmation and up it goes. And uh, this is a good four hour breakout candle as well. And it's still moving up in fact. And there was a slight consolidation here. I was looking for a bull flag and you know breakout continuation. I was looking for a slightly bigger consolidation than this, but it's so bullish that it, it just didn't do much more than that. It just went slightly sideways and is already moving higher. It's really out of control in, in the sense that it's really moving fast. And uh, yeah, I've been keeping an eye on this uh, euro odd for more upside throughout the whole day because once it makes a big momentum like this, odd USD, pound odd, euro odd, all of them have the same, that typically it keeps pushing and we see bull flags and you know one more push. All right, so eventually this will retrace. Once price makes a couple of bull flags, and eventually there'll be divergence between these tops and we'll get a bigger you know, retracement or correction. But for the moment, full steam ahead. Um, you know, this was a very small flag. I was looking for a slightly bigger flag. Uh, the courageous ones maybe took that one on this candle there above this breakout. <clears throat> and in that case, the trade is going well. Uh, now it's a bit on the late side already though, All right? Now it's a bit too late. But anyone who took this trade, took this breakout candle, can put the stop loss at break even. All right, now pound dollar. Let's take a look at um, one quick setup. But by the way, regarding the Aussie, just to show you how important candles are, even on smaller time frames. Right, I was talking here about that we need a break and flag. Or we're not, not even a break, we need momentum and a correction and a, and a, and a continued break below that. So this was the, I was talking about that about here. So this is the support trend line, <clears throat> excuse me, like this. So how can we use candles for a breakout like that? All right, there you go. That's the breakout candle. Close very near the low. Strong candle, good size, and uh, small wick at the bottom. And indeed, boom, we get the continuation. So that's a great breakout of a flag. So it's, it's really valid for all time frames. It's just that you have to be more aware of what's going on on, on lower time frames. Right? You have to do a little bit more analysis than only looking at uh, when, when looking at daily charts. Because on the daily chart, we don't have to be concerned about the hourly charts necessarily. You can take a look, of course, but it's typically not that uh, important. So let's take a look at this pound. Basically, pound bounce that support, as we were talking about, that this is in a triangle and it has broken above resistance like this. There we go. <clears throat> and uh, basically, there could be a breakout now, right? We had the bounce. This was a bounce or break spot, as I indicated in my wave analysis and indicated in this webinar that this, this could be, yes, we were talking about earlier, remember here, we were talking about the rising wedge. If you're looking for a break of this rising wedge, this could have been a good candlestick. It fell, and I said, don't trade it here because it's going to be uh, a correction, but that correction could be bouncing at support. Remember? So it did bounce and it didn't break, in fact, and we had a very strong bounce. So such a strong bounce that on a four hour chart, we have strong bullish candles. The main question is, I think that this could be a good breakout. In fact, we've got a good candle close near the high, good four hour candles. So this could be a break to the upside. In that case, I would put a fib from here to here and look for price to get up to the minus 272 target at 134.20. <clears throat> So from this perspective, uh, I think that this is tradable and could put a fib maybe from, from here to here, look for a 38.2 fib or put even a fib on the four hour chart, four hour candle, sorry, from here to here and uh, look for the 61, 78 or 50 fib. We already had a 50 in fact, but okay. And look for the continuation. The extra confirmation in my view would be on a daily chart 
if today's candle closes near a high. This is important for, for me personally, because if it doesn't, and if it ends up all the way here, all right, it's, it's good to get out for break even or a small loss even on that trade. There's a big wick at the bottom right here. Uh, sorry, on the top, then that's not a good signal. So the stop loss from this perspective, well, it could be below this candle low, but probably the best spot is still below here. It is a bit big though, because of that. If you took uh, an entry here, for instance, you know, we're talking about 135 pips. The target is at 134, 20, it's about 180 pip target. So it's still about 1.3 reward to risk to one, I guess, or, or almost 1.5. Obviously, it would be a bit better if we can use this as a stop loss. Then the stop loss is reduced to about 80 pips versus 180. So here we're looking at a 2 to 1 and more, in fact. A little bit more than a 2 to 1, probably 2.25, something like that, if I do my math correctly, depending where the entry is exactly, of course. There is a bit of a risk that, in the sense that if we do get that wick on the daily candle, the price would be somewhere down in here, but I would still expect a bounce and then a rejection here for more downside. <clears throat> so if this daily candle ends up with the wick at the top of the daily candle ends up with more than 35% wick, I'll be cautious and that does not look like a good breakout candle. If the wick is lower than 35%, then that looks good for a breakout continuation. So I think the trade could be, from my point of view, it's okay to trade now the breakout, but it's good to keep an eye on this daily candle to see what's going on with the pound. Is there a confirmation? or not. So today's daily candle, does that make sense? Today's daily candle, high-low difference is 160 pips. So a third of 160, right, is 53 pips, which means the high is at 132.70. That means the close should not be below, at this moment at least, 132.17. So let's put a purple line there, 113, 117. There we go, 113, 132.17, right there. If it closes below that, then it's doubtful. Now, mind you that this is based on the current high. It could still push today within today's daily candle, make it a higher high, and then I have to do the math again. Of course, this is just to give you an idea. Uh, yeah, let's see, regarding the news, yes, there is an interest rate correction, uh, interest rate decision tomorrow, that's correct, and it could be one of the reasons why it was that choppy, indeed, that, that is very true. I, nece I don't necessarily skip the euro or any other currency if there's an interest rate that week. I do skip it if it's that day, so that's just my way of trading. Everyone could have their own rules for that, of course. <clears throat> Uh, so I do, tr you know, avoid trading it typically on that day and we'll think about it again when the rate decision has been made. So that's my take or approach. So that's the pound. Mm, let's see. The all again didn't make it to the target zone of 114.50. Unfortunately, it's, it's uh, stopped shy at 114.25. Is moving down pretty fast. So let's see. You know, as I, you know, I was definitely um, interested in a reversal candle in this zone. It kind of missed my zone. So not sure now. It depends on how bearish this daily candle is. You know, if it is a bearish candle, it could be the end of this this upside on the yen weakness so something to think about 
on the dollar yen. Uh, pound yen made a great upside, but it was because of the pound more than the yen, maybe. All right. So uh, let's see. Any other examples of this week? <clears throat> well, I was actually on the weekend. We can talk about this a bit. I was looking at the Euro New Zealand. We were looking at the Euro New Zealand already for quite a while. So let me make a quick recap. I don't want to bore you here, but uh, we were talking about this, right? This momentum, this correction down to the 61.8 FIB, then the move to the minus 272 target, and then a bounce. And we talked about this bounce to the minus 272 target, that this could be a correction from our upside. So indeed, we got a choppy kind of bull flag, exactly as expected. We get a break of that bull flag, right? So this is chart patterns. And when do we get the confirmation of that, that the chart pattern is breaking? Well, we get a break right here. That's the daily candle break. Of course, it depends how you draw this trend line as well. If you're more conservative, you know, you might want to wait for this candle. Not much difference. And up it went. Couldn't break through the top and made still a retracement. All right. But then we had a bullish candle on the daily chart and we had a bullish week, in fact, right here. So I was already saying that on the weekend that this is a continuation of the momentum we've already had on this weekly chart. So chart analysis indicates channel to the upside. It indicates break above the minus 272 target, which means the minus 61.8 target is now in vision. It's a solid candle with a good size and a candle close near the high. So I was looking for a retracement of that candle, a slight retracement to the 23.6 FIB or 38.2 FIB. And it went to the 23.6 FIB indeed. And continuation, and indeed it's continuing. So you can see that maybe a bit better on lower time frames. There we go, retracement, continuation, and it's been doing nothing else basically at the moment. All right, and there we go. So, you know, this is tradable on a daily candle, you know, using basically <clears throat> the candlesticks. As a swing trader using candlesticks, you could think about an entry there. And, uh, well, a stop loss could be below the daily candle low or below the 50 FIB, although that's, of course, a tad more risky. Or on lower time frames, I was looking for breakouts on the pound New Zealand, Euro New Zealand this week, um, pound yen, euro yen, pound cad, euro cad, dollar cad. Those are all breakouts to the upside. Most worked, except one of the first the pound yens, as far as I know, maybe I missed something, but as far as I know, uh, most worked well. And this was one of the breakout, breakout candles right here. This one, so again, good confirmation right here of a breakout good candle close strong candle why because it's, it's it has a lot of volatility in it it's a it's meaning it has a big you know a size and a good close near the high it was a great breakout candle and it has to hit the target so that was a good one um oh sorry about that folks one second All right, folks, I'm back. So uh, let's see. Yeah, that, that those are good setups on you know New Zealand yen weakness. Really uh, good patterns, I think. And I think these candlesticks nicely confirm that. So it doesn't have to be necessarily a candlestick pattern, although of course this is a bullish engulfing twin. But my point is that you know we we don't necessarily have to use patterns. We can just use the candle, the logic and the information from the candle itself. I talked about pound yen not working out, so we can take a look at that at the beginning. So we had on the pound yen daily chart, we had a retracement, right? We got good momentum to the upside, and we got a retracement like this. So 
we had a breakout of this resistance trend line here and uh, we had engulfing twins here so those are all confirmation signals then we had a break of this trend line like this on Friday that was a signal for more upside there we go. So we had break here and Friday break. So I was looking for a continuation. And one of the signals that I think didn't work that well was, from my point of view, was this. This didn't get it. This was like a small false break. So that didn't work. I mean, on the four hour chart, we didn't have it. On the hourly chart, we had a small break, but it didn't go anywhere, right? It had a bigger correction like this. And it filled the gap, and I was looking for a continuation. So that's the one of the one of the breakouts that didn't work. And we had, instead we got a bigger correction because of the pound weakness. But what did happen though is that when we made this downside and then make a flag like this, I did say wait for a break to the upside, or if it breaks this particular support level, then there could be a bigger correction down to the minus two seven two target or the minus sixty one point eight target. So here. We had to bounce at the minus 272 target. Engulfing twins, yet again, a good example of candlestick confirmation at the 272 target. Because I don't know, of course, if it's going to be this target or this target, but I do know one of the two is pretty likely. So candles kind of confirmed that. And we had engulfing, well, not engulfing twins, but I think a good candlestick pattern at the minus 272 target. We had a good breakout candle of support two. So that could have been a good counter trend trade down to the minus 272 target. And then we had a good bullish candlestick pattern and that led to this great breakout. And if you're looking for the breakout and you didn't take the bounce at the 272 target, then this was a pretty good breakout candle. Although, obviously, it's such a big candle that <clears throat> from this perspective, uh, if you use the low, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like a one-to-one -one situation. So not a great R2R maybe, but overall, still a, a good breakout, almost too good of a breakout. So, Good breakout, good bounce, good breakout, um, bad breakout. Right? That can always happen. But, uh, you know, besides this uh, pound yen, I think most breakouts were working well on, on the, at least the pairs I was looking at. Your yen, also nice uh, little breakout here. And candle confirmation here. I even had a 50 minute entry on this one with a with a candle sorry with a chart pattern called the bull flag right here with a candlestick confirmation here then we had a bigger bull flag on a 50 minute chart this was a small bull flag within the momentum this was a bigger pattern and uh, after look at this break and go and i think candles do a great job of that confirmation you can connect the dots like this and look for the candlestick confirmation, which could be this one looks good or this one looks good. Now, <clears throat> uh, this is looks maybe may easy, but keep in mind that chart analysis, wave analysis, you know, chart and wave patterns went into or let me say it differently, went behind this analysis, right? So it's something to keep in mind that not necessarily every trend line that you draw, you know, is, is one that is good to trade as a breakout, all right? Because sometimes one of the reasons why I'm not trading the Euro Zealand continuation here, although it did work, was because it had already made such an extensive move. That was part of my analysis that I did, therefore I skipped it. Okay. It, it, actually it did work out but that's that's sometimes the risk you don't want to you sometimes obviously miss trades and you got to choose the ones i think that have the best odds i didn't think that the new zealand weakness would continue much i might be wrong on that so far I probably am i guess but that's okay right you got to pick your battles in, in in some ways all right so euro pound Euro pound, uh, we had. We can we can do a bit more extensive one on this one. Let's say. What you want to keep an eye on is. Is basically. Um, 
yeah, kind of a, a 360 degree view, depending on which time frames you use. But in any case, you want to have be aware that this is a bearish candle and that these FIBs could be resistance, for instance. On a weekly chart, we see some wicks at the top, so that could indicate a struggle, right? But we have a bullish candle still there. On the daily chart, right? What do we see here? We see a triangle at this moment, like this, like this, right? So it's at a spot where uh, if it breaks to the upside, it still faces heavy resistance at these FIBs, whereas if it breaks to the downside, there's probably a better chance for price to get to the minus 272 target. All right. So within this triangle, <clears throat> It's not really much to trade on a daily chart. What I would probably be looking for is a break below the support trend like this for downside. Or if we get a bullish break, I would probably need to see a bullish candle close something like this. And there's a good chance for us to get up to the 78.6 fib. So that's what I would be looking for on the daily chart because at this moment I don't think this is, you know, we had for instance here we had a good candle stick pattern there, right? But it didn't go too far, so far. And I think it has to do with the fact that prices made it a strong downside, but it's still an uptrend. So there's a bit of a mixture there. So let me just grab some uh, some tea one second. All right, I'm back. So, you know, from this point of view, the triangle could be tradable. This trend line will probably put a little bit higher. Uh, let's see. All right, so we are getting a bounce at this triangle, for instance. I mean, some traders might want to trade that bounce. How do you trade it? Candlesticks are great for that, typically. In this case, we got a lot late, relatively late confirmation, I would say, on the one-hour chart. On a 50-minute chart, maybe this one, but that's a big question mark. So not always do you get a perfect confirmation, but I think that often it's a pretty good signal. Uh, let's see. Here's the odd New Zealand resistance trend line, break of the resistance, pullback continuation. And how do you know that was a good continuation? Nice wick here. And up it goes. Right? So good confirmation there. What else can we... Uh, analyze on this chart so for instance here good momentum <clears throat> good momentum correction so how do you know that correction is finished bullish candle here or bullish breakout here or here So it doesn't have to be that sophisticated sometimes. It doesn't have to be that, um, you, know, can, you know, candlestick patterns have to necessarily emerge on the charts. I think that um, using candles themselves on higher time frames is a lot of info already. And of course, using extra chart analysis, wave analysis, patterns <clears throat> helps a lot with finding the setups that are yeah, basically have the, have the better odds or have more uh, more success rate just because you're setting yourself up in a position, you know, you're looking at a chart that is set up uh, interestingly or that has something that it could offer, like a breakout or a good bounce or some good space, right? So that is, of course, a very important step as well. 
the context helps a lot. Uh, let's see if we can find, let me think, anything else to discuss, maybe gold, for instance, right? Uh, we were looking at gold and saying, okay, this is a falling wedge, right? So got to be careful, this falling wedge. It might not break the support. If it does, I need to see a candlestick confirmation. And we didn't get it, and up it went. So at least avoided shorting there in this downtrend. And traders that are more aggressive might be might have been even thinking about upside, right? But I don't like to focus on those things too much because this is a very difficult pattern to trade a reversal. Pound cat. I seem to have lost my pound cat. There we go. <clears throat> so, for instance, pound cat, if we get a good daily candle like this, could be again a breakout in fact. We have a trend line like that. So this could be a good breakout candle. And uh, a retracement continuation would be great. And that retracement does not have to be too much. Put a fib on that candle, like this, and up it goes, for instance, right? So something to to be you know, aware of that uh, this is a, a breakout. This is an interesting chart, definitely. Pound strength has kicked in today and uh, I think should get a continuation. So we had some good trends, I think. New Zealand weakness, Aussie weakness, Yen weakness. Pound, pound strength, you know, I think that market moved nicely this week so far. So, and I think that the Aussie weakness and the pound strength has some some space left, as far as I can see at least, <clears throat> at this moment. With the yen, I'm not so sure. I think that is, you can see that it, it's not as impulsive at the moment. Any other questions with regard to candlest candlesticks? So very useful information and gives you really a clue, a background about who's the winner in each day, but also in critical zones, in supportive resistance levels, decision zones, so very useful. Even here, for instance, right? We're in a downtrend, but look at this strong bullish candle here, breaking above that trend line. At the very minimum, we have to be careful of this downtrend that it could be over at the very minimum, right? If not, already thinking about a bigger reversal slash correction. Or how about here, for instance, <clears throat> as price is making a retracement? How far can the retracement last? These bearish engulfing twins give a pretty good clue that that could be the end. And boom, down it went for a lower low. Here too. So a lot of info we can get from, from candlestick patterns like this. So for more info about candles, check out education, check out articles, check out the webinars, check out our courses, Zero to Hero here, Forex 101 with Admiral Markets Analytics, Net and Technical Analysis. If you're more interested about patterns, check out Wave Analysis. And there's Fundamental Analysis, of course, as well. And, uh, oh, that's actually not been updated, sorry. But, um, Articles here and market sentiments. There's a lot of good tools here. 
you'll find a lot of good info with regard to, uh, to trading and candlesticks patterns in general in, in these sections. All right, so check that out after this webinar. Maybe we can take a quick look at, uh, I would say, let's take a quick look at silver perhaps. Silver seems to be making a bull flag at this moment. And I'll take a look one more time at gold. Gold could be good to take a look at this daily candle. If it closes bullish, that could be a good indication of more upside. But if it's still like a doji like this, I would probably still sit on the sidelines for that. Yeah, that's about it for the moment. So we'll be back next week, as I said. I hope that uh, you know you see the value of candlesticks. I think that most of you are already candlestick uh, fans, but uh, you know I, I think that there are multiple ways of using them, and I, I hope that, that this has helped a little bit with your candlestick reading and your candlestick interpre interpretations, and you know understanding how you can use them for bounce and breaks and for analysis and for trading purposes. So uh, I hope that helped. We'll be back uh, tomorrow, actually, uh, I should say, with the scalping webinar, and wish you all good trading. See you soon. Cheers.